Hello, in this video, I'll be discussing the concept about the super antigens. So as the name suggests, super antigens are a little bit different from the normal antigens. And itself, some bacteria produce super antigens to confuse the immune system by producing a situation which is equal, equivalent to a false alarm. So it, it's kind of a protective mechanism by which some bacteria and some cases some viruses are able to confuse the body's immune system just to save their ass. Now, let's say there is a particular bacterial antigen. Now, the T cell would mount a specific response against this antigen. And the way T cell can recognize this antigen with the help of antigen presenters, right? But this kind of super antigens creates an error in this specific detection system. Instead, they non specifically allow proliferation of the T cell and activation of the T cell. Now, once the T cells are non specifically active, they secrete huge amount of cytokines that brings about many other immune cells like macrophages, eosinophil, mast cells, etc., into the uh, specific region. As a result, huge inflammatory response is evoked. But point to be noted is that inflammatory response is a non specific response. So the specific defense system or the specific uh, counter system against a particular pathogen is bypassed. And that's a pathogen survival mechanism that many bacteria used. One such example is Staphylococcus aureus toxic shock toxin. That is also a super antigen. So let's just take a look how super antigen is different from a normal antigen. How does they work? And super antigen overall create a chaos in the immune system. Now let's say there is a bacterial invasion in the body. Now this bacteria would be engulfed by the macrophages or the dendritic cell and some bacterial antigens are going to be chewed up and presented by the class 2 MHC molecules to the T helper cells. And all these antigens are processed inside the macrophages and they are bound in the peptide binding groove of the MHC class 2 molecules. And as a result, selective T helper cell population, a cohort, and, and that cohort of the T helper cell population is almost 1 to 2 percent of the whole T cell population. So that selective pool of T cells would be activated. That would ultimately activate uh, B cells and that B cells would differentiate into plasma cells to give rise to specific immune response. But what super antigen does is it binds laterally to the MHC molecule and the T helper cells T cell receptor. So the T cell receptor and the MHC interaction is lateral, laterally bridged by this kind of uh, super antigens. Now, these super antigens are not engulfed by the bacteria. They are not processed inside. They are not engulfed by the um, macrophages. And they are not processed inside the macrophages. As if they are not even experienced by the macrophages. And they are never represented in the peptide binding groove. As a result, it would activate non-specifically all the T cells. Now, these T cells would secrete specific inflammatory cytokines like IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha, etc. And all these things can mount a, a overall non-specific inflammatory response. Now, from the bacteria side, this is pretty much advantageous because when the immune system is non-specifically active, there is a huge confusion in the immune system what to attack or what not to attack. And the probability that the immune system would selectively attack that particular pathogen is reduced. So it's a beneficial part from the pathogen side. But people still doubt that what is the beneficial side of this kind of super antigen based non-specific activation of the T cells in terms of the body. But none of more or less, the body is getting harmed by this kind of activation, not a kind of a benefited because after the super antigen are capable of activating at least 20 to 30 percent of the T cells of our body, whereas a specific antigen can only activate one or two percent. So this huge non-specific activation changes the microenvironment where the immune responses would happen. Now, 
let's look at our details where super antigen binds super antigen binds to the alpha region of the t cell receptor and variable alpha region of the mhc molecule laterally and breach the interaction and it ultimately generates a false alarm now the consequence of super antigen mediated non-specific t cell activation or overall immune activation is inflammation sometimes redness even fever can be evoked and at chronic cases there could be death now the super antigens are roughly categorized into two categories one is endogenous super antigen and another is exogenous so exogenous super antigens are mostly some bacterial exotoxins like staphylococcal enterotoxins toxic syndrome toxins produced by staphylococcus aureus and many other dermatitis toxin etc but endogenous toxins endogenous super antigens are basically membrane proteins that are produced by viral genes some retroviral genes which are some point of the time integrated into the host genome one such example is mammary gland mammary gland tumor virus so which give rise to a specific membrane bound antigen known as minor lymphocyte stimulating determinant or mid that can lead to huge non specific t cell interaction t cell activation and overall non specific chaos in the immune system so that was my video about super antigens if you like this video and find this informative share among your friends and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you